Hey guys and welcome to my channel Modern Ukrainian Homestead and guess what? I already opened up and a little bit unboxed this absolutely great inverter with this brand name. Somebody called it Deya, but it's Day. That's the correct pronunciation, Day. The short E, the next one, Day. That's it. Um, so let me give you some updates. So I had undone it, but it's absolutely great because we can see everything already, already in, in place. So what, what has been into? I mean, it's packed perfectly. Absolutely no issues with that. Take a look at what kind of cardboard thickness is here. It's how much? Five or seven layers? Seven, I believe. Yes, yeah, seven layers uh, corrugated cardboard. And I mean, take a look. Like here they have additional corners for protection so it's absolutely like perfectly packaged no issues with that uh, nice foam foamy foamy stuff i mean from the bottom on the top everything is in place every box sits on its desired dedicated plate absolutely everything is amazing so what's inside you see everything the mounting plate you see, they have they actually give you the connectors, the MC4 connectors to use for connection for the uh, PV mo uh, PV lines. They give you the screwdriver specific one. They give you the additional cable to convert to a RS485. Uh, probably they give you anchor bolts even for. I, I mean, I not be I will not be using these. I will be using different ones, but still these are good for some cases. Uh, what else? They give you the current trackers. Current trackers are here. Let's take a look. So yeah, that's it. This is the one, the openable. The one that can be open, so this is very handy, very convenient. And I mean, it should have a tiny arrow where is the direction of where the current should go. Hold on a sec, I will show it to you. Yeah, you see this? Right there, right there, you see it on the camera right now. So that's that's the arrow that indicates the, where the current should go. Like there are three of them because my inverter is the three-phase 10 kilowatt one. That's how it looks. They give you the instructions. In my case, it's in English and German. Uh, I'll probably study German a little bit. L not study, I, I mean, I speak a little bit of German, but not that good as English. They give you the cable. I believe it's for maybe parallel connection or for BMS, whatever. Like, I mean, literally it can be used for anything because it's the same Ethernet cable. They give you a REST485 cable. You see the black and red uh, and, and red wire, uh, some kind of inputs. Oh, no, 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 sorry, hold on. That's a sensor. That's a temperature sensor. Come on, yes, literally. This is a temperature sensor. I, I didn't get it from the first sight. Yeah. That's it. To measure the, what's what's in the batteries, like the temperature in the batteries uh, on the battery pack, somewhere around there. What else? Uh, a number of uh, magnetic, uh, I mean, this kind of uh, coils. These are required to be used to reduce some, I don't know how, how it's called, impedances. Uh, I might be mistaken, but still. Different sizes. Each of them is designated for some certain occasion. So you just check the instructions. So what's it about? What else? It's a logger. It's a logger, the logging device. And the fun fact is, you see, take a look like this one is connected down there. Like the very bottom, there is the, uh, the logger. And I mean, this logger is absolutely the same that I have on my grid tie inverters. Let's go and take a look. That's very easy. Oh, by the way, you see this one? That's the next unpacking stuff. <laughs> We'll have a lot of fun, as I told you. Let's take a look at this one. Wind grid tie inverter, the ones that are dragging out the power from my gel batteries and transfer it to my DAIA system. But you see, they use the same loggers. Absolutely same. No changes to the design. I mean, if it works, it works. I mean, these inverters are already on market for like 10 years. This means that these loggers are as well. <laughs> Why would you change something if it works, right? That's absolutely nice and correct attitude from someone who is a good manufacturer. Anyways, let's get here. And once I have it open, let's check what's inside. Like, again, I mean, seriously, this four box tool 
help me to do this. I'm using it all the time for this kind of like occasions. It has a lot of sockets, a lot of different sizes. I mean, like something very standard that is needed. I will give you the link if you want. If you don't, just like skip it, forget it. But anyways, let's see what's inside. But before screen, uh, for those who don't know, this is a touch screen. You can touch there and there are like four physical buttons up and down and escape and enter like confirm and, and or go back. There are also four indicators, the one for DC, uh, for your PV inputs where you can put your solar panels or a wind turbine. I will talk about it later at some videos. I will be doing this actually later, later on. AC input, so if you have this flashing, uh, I mean not flashing but light, uh, it means that there is AC normal, it means normal operation alarm when something is actually not okay. So this one is red, those are green. What else? Take a look at terminals. These are battery ones. This is actually great. This is absolutely massive. Like absolutely according to the battery bank size that you may use for this inverter. That's what it's supposed to have. Look how many communication stuff it has. Parallel A, parallel B, additional meter you can assign. It can work with the specific meter additionally. What else? Modbus, BMS, and this is DRM. How many dry contacts? Come on, seriously, a ton of them. So you can do a lot of stuff. You can do a lot of automation based on whatever signals you may use, you just have to like stick clearly with the instructions. I mean, and there will be no issues with making everything work as you expect. And uh, the connections, like this is the main switch, the grid that gets into here and then goes through the inverter and then the loads go out here. The one that they call the UPS load on their uh, schemes everywhere. And my favorite, the gen port. Like, anyway, so this case, this time it's Eden. In my case, it's another in the other inverter. Like, I have exactly the same one, uh, 10 kilowatt already working for almost two years. So, this one will be mounted in parallel to work in maybe a slave mode, in slave. So, that one will be master. This one will be slave or like vice versa. I don't care. Um, maybe the new one will be master. Like, I, I haven't decided it yet. But you see, there I have the 63. Uh, amp switch and here we have 50 but i mean they are okay absolutely both are over the capacity of the inverter so it's absolutely okay uh, to actually use any of them uh, the terminals app are perfect like i have no issues with that everything is really described explained so here is the pv input on the other side so you may actually see one of those magnetic <coughs> or fritium uh, um, rubber bands, I don't know, being in use. It's already pre-built from the factory, whatever. And here is the uh, board for the Wi-Fi connection. So that's it from the insides. Uh, let me just like screw it all together and I will show you what's outside, like what are the uh, functions of on, on, on each of the side from, from, the, from the bottom and what's on the back. Hold on a sec. Phew. It's heavy, 40 something, 44, 43, I don't know the exact value of the weigh, but 40 something kilos. Uh, so here is the face, it now is low, low eyes up, like up. down upwards, upwards down, whatever. Uh, on the left side, we have the on off button, we have this DC switch that clicks nicely so you cannot miss it definitely. You have the handlebar. On the right side, you also have the handlebar. You have the stickers. This is the called so-called passport of this inverter. You have some other stickers, the serial, whatever. And you have the warranty void sticker. So, I mean, literally, I was undoing this board. This is okay to be undone, but this one, the top one with the screen, no, it's not. So, like, just be careful. I'm just, like, curious because my inverter that I have in my house, it doesn't have the sticker. I don't know, I don't know why, but I mean, anyways, if things can be changed. And before going to upper, well, I mean, to the bottom actually part, let's go to the back one, because here we may see the radiators that are massive, like I don't know what these three are for, but these are for some core stuff. And these are the ventilators, active cooling, the thing that is quite noisy, absolutely, that's true. So, I mean, if you will be buying this guy, Think of installing it in some place where 
um, like it will have nice ventilation and where will it have the possibility to be out like it will not be bothering you i mean literally just go it go for a garage or some other stuff because well it will be noisy believe me believe me the radiator itself is huge it's massive literally and look there is another one the big one i have no idea honestly uh, what about uh, what exactly does it take care of but i mean this literally is a very different radiator or something on the inside like i haven't undone it so i don't know uh what is it responsible for but still well i mean the, these are these are separate i mean this one and this one this one probably is for a main board this is for something very specific um not sure Okay, on this side, battery, how do you call it? The sealed entrance, right? Fully sealed. So, uh, I mean, literally you can, like, you have to feed your cable through it and then just, like, tighten it and that's it. So the same applies for plus or, min or minus. Same applies to grid input, load, and generator port input, whatever. Uh, the com inputs communicational ones they are slightly different they are for the cables like this uh, still pretty nice pretty sealed no issues with that uh, what else here is the wi-fi connection model so we'll have to undo this to actually attach that that piece element i'm not sure what these are supposed to be for but here there is one place where the grounding should be mounted like and that's an, that's actually really a must uh the body of the inverter has also to be grounded despite you have clearly seen that there when there is a grid input uh, there there was the earth terminal connection right but still the grounding also has to be done to this side as well absolutely without any questions and then for PV inputs like we have this kind of seals, rubber seals, and the standard connectors are inside. Uh, let me explain you a little bit of stuff like how it works actually. So this exact inverter, this is 10 kilowatt day. Uh, the specification actually is for EU or for AU. You have you can get the US based one absolutely like they have they have for for any uh, part of the world. Uh, but uh, in my case, it has like two MPPTs and three entrances, right? Three and three inputs. So P MPPT two has got only one, and MPPT one has got like two in parallel. It can be clearly seen in the specs, or actually somewhere here. Where is it? Like solar input? I just don't remember. Yeah, so some somewhere here. Just like uh, you ha will have to check. What specifically is required for each of those? Yeah, a max PV in uh, th this. Uh, this is the amperage, and then there is the voltage uh, f for each of them. Like th these are the values. Anyways, um, believe it or not, but this inverter knows a very interesting trick. So, for example, let me explain you, like on a very simple example. If you have 20, uh, 20 panels, like 10 panel on one entry, 10 panel on the other one, on the other on on the other input. And all of them are uh, like literally 10 sequence, 10 sequence, and those two tenths are in parallel to be input one here and one here. Um, all okay, yeah, right. But you will tell me that since this is one MPPT, you have to make them work in the same, uh, how do you call it, on, 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 on the same uh, flat surface, same lane, same, same lane surface, right? But believe it or not, these, and these can have different angles and it will work, work absolutely perfectly. The thing is that this MPPT has to only keep the similar, I don't even say same, I say similar voltage to the, which is closest to those arrays that can be applied here and here. Well, let me explain you why, because literally you can even apply different panels say one of one eight of one type and 10 of another type but if the array's voltage matches it will work absolutely perfectly with the, with the minimal losses because like on this mppt it has the global mppt scanning and it can apply different amperage for each of the inputs that's how it works and this thing is amazing absolutely amazing to those who know who understand what it's about 
like this is something this is definitely something i had in my case specifically for some time because like i have this sim inventor for those who know it works in the house over there for almost two years right now exactly same one absolutely identical and i had at some point like for one and a half years six and seven panels working on uh, same size yes but they were working on uh, this pv1 input and believe it or not the voltage was not even same but uh it was even managing to, like to close the gap between those voltages so it was using like 30 percent up from the first one and and, and 70 percent down from the second one and it was using this kind of voltage so i was not losing a lot i was literally like losing maybe like 15 20 percent of that additional uh extra panel so people told me yeah you should remove it then you will have more production i told them no i will actually lose production and that's what actually happened because i did a lot of tests switching one of them on, on and off and i mean it is was absolutely not necessary to do this so i mean this thing really really works and now imagine these inverters can have three mppts yes yes exactly this same uh 10 kilowatt or 12 kilowatt because literally they uh can be in various uh, sizes of power uh they can have three mppts with two inputs each i mean seriously what more will you probably need like that's insane uh, you have just like to look in specification for the am3 in the end numbers that will be uh, um, stating you the number of mppts inside like, but always check with the specs talk, check with the data sheet to understand what is exactly required uh i know I mean, I can talk about this inverter a lot, but this is supposed to be only the unpacking and overall overview video. Uh, I will be mounting it very, very, very soon, so I'll show you how it's everything will be done, how will it fit inside. And of course, it will be using these batteries. This is the vertical one, and there are the stackables, several of them. So next one, I will be unpacking those, and then we will be mounting them. Yeah, so let me know, guys, if you like this or not. Actually, if you like, hit the like button, right? If you haven't subscribed yet, just do it because there will be a lot of stuff going on around very, very soon. It already started and well, see you later and have fun.